Hello and welcome to our Friday webinar. Um, we have some uh, new, ex special, uh, new and extra special guests with us today. Uh, you want to do introductions? Who, who are, uh, who's, who's joining us today? We've got Jamie. I'll let you start. Oh, introduce myself. Yeah, I'm Jamie Whitaker. I am. Um, well, I'm, I'm a lot of things. So <laughs> I have a bird store in the Houston area, and I have had for 35 years. Um, I do parrot behavior consultations. But I was past president of the American Federation of Aviculture for six years. I've been the first vice president. I'm now second vice president. I have been on the board for about 20 years. And the biggest thing that I do with AFA is their annual conference. So that's who I am. I have birds. I love birds. I, I can't say enough about my feelings about birds. <laughs> Awesome. Okay. Okay. And, and uh, Jack. My, my name is Jack Pine. I am a professional animal caretaker and trainer. Um, I've been working with exotic birds and all kinds of exotic animals for quite a few years now. Um, I'm also very, very excited that I am on the board of directors for the National Parrot Foundation. I am the festival coordinator for their annual Parrot Festival. Um, and one other thing I'm very excited about is this year I will be one of the speakers at the 50th annual AFA conference. Awesome. All right. I am so excited. Uh, I haven't, I, I, I've been to, um, I've been to AFA before back in my bird talk days and I've been to Parrot Fest and I cannot tell you how excited I am to be going. I'm back uh, going to AFA, um, a, a, you know, next month. It's gonna be right around the corner. Like this, this, this is very. I'm, I'm like, especially like it's been, it's been a while since I've had a chance to go. So I am very excited. Um, and so we're gonna find out a lot about, um, about what the what the conference is about and, and about AFA. It's a, it's an extremely important organization. Um, so maybe you can speak to how the, the roots, how its roots got started, Jamie, and, um. Okay. And I, I, I'm sorry, before we, before we dive, take a deep dive into this, I wanted to remind people that um, if you have a question, we'll, 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 we'll do it at the end, uh, after we're done, uh, when we have a, towards the end of the webinar, but use the, um, the Q&A button and not the chat feature for that. So there we go. Okay. <laughs> so for those of you that are not familiar with AFA, American Federation of Aviculture was formed 50 years ago in 1974 in California. There was a Newcastle's outbreak that took place in California, which devastated the poultry industry. And uh, you may or may not know the poultry, poultry industry has a huge lobby and they, they get a lot of things that they have that they want. Um, it's, it's a huge thing, the poultry industry. So chickens were dying and being euthanized by the millions. And they fixated on pet parrots as a way to to uh, curb this horrible, horrendous disease. Um, there was evidence that a parrot had been brought in with Newcastle's disease from Mexico and that that's where it started. So the plan was to outlaw parrots from the United States and to go door to door in California and euthanize parrots without testing first. If you can imagine it, it's almost too difficult to talk about um, people pulling up in a van and coming into your home with gas masks on and taking your birds out of their cages and off their perches, putting them in pillowcases and euthanizing them. That is, it is, it's like the worst horror movie that has ever been made. So a group of people got together um, and formed the American Federation of Aviculture to put a stop to this. And they did manage to put a stop to the random euthanization of parrots without being tested. They, they arranged for birds to be quarantined in their home and to be tested. And eventually the Newcastle's outbreak ran its course and parrots were still allowed to be in the United States. And a lot of that is due to the very hard work of the founders of the American Federation of Aviculture. So it is a 501c3 organization. We do support aviculture which is not just breeding, it's also, it's birds. So birds in the wild, birds in your home, birds that are breeding, birds that are rescued. If you are a bird caretaker, 
then we support you and we want to make life for your bird better and life for you with your bird better. Um, we do offer several educational things, but one of our main ones is this annual conference, and this will be our 50th annual conference, and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we also have, if you go to our website, afabirds.org, we have some uh, resources there for teachers and some, uh, we have DVDs for sale from past conferences. Um, we have several several ways that you can learn about birds. We have an, a magazine that comes out four times a year, the AFA Watchbird. It's a, a phenomenal magazine and also a good way to be more educated about birds. But we are all about the education and all about every facet of bird keeping. So uh, some people feel like, oh, I just have a parakeet, so they wouldn't be interested in me. And that's not true because you have a parakeet that you love and you want to know more about them. And so we want to know more about you. So that's it. That's the American Federation of Agriculture in a nutshell. We do support conservation. We also have a disaster relief program. So uh, the wildfires, floods, tornadoes, horrible things that happen where birds are affected. You know, uh, there's a lot of, the Red Cross does a lot to help the people, but nobody does a lot to help the birds except us. So we'll help rebuild cages and replace food that's been destroyed because of the blood or, or whatever. We want to make sure those birds get care every single day. People can't just wait until they're fully recovered and then say, okay, now let's start feeding my birds again. Um, they have to have that support from the beginning. And we do that. So I think that's that's AFA in a nutshell. That's wow, that's a good that's a AFA good and thorough ex yeah. <laughs> and 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 I mean, can 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 people join AFA? Like how? I mean, is that? Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. So afabirds.org. Um, single membership is forty dollars. You can have a supporting membership, which we appreciate for seventy five dollars. We have commercial memberships. We have sponsorships. We have um, at whatever level you are at, but the basic membership is $40 a year. And you guys had that fabulous magazine. I, I remember the, the, the Watchbird, AFA Watchbird. And it's, they got yes, four it is, a year. And it's an awesome magazine from AFA Watchbird. Yeah. And you do get that if you join at $40 a year. And it is also available online now. So oh. as, the, as the issues come out, I think, the previous issue is available digitally. So I'm pretty sure about that. But you also have a physical magazine, right? Like a, when you can- A physical magazine is a beautiful magazine yeah. and it comes out four times a year. Which is nice because you don't see magazines so much anymore, especially yeah, bird magazines. So. <laughs> and they have beautiful bird pictures and information about birds and stories about birds that you've never heard of. And, um, but you find interesting. So Very nice. anyway, okay, so, so we should go into the conference. The conference. <laughs> so we have this conference every year. We move. Uh, last year we were in Dallas. The year before that we were in Virginia. Uh, the year before that we were in Minnesota. So this year we are in Costa Mesa, California, close to Disneyland. That's right. And next year will be someplace on the East Coast. So we move like that. The object of the game is to have the conference within 500 miles of everybody every six years. So um, if you're one that doesn't like to travel too far, eventually we'll come to you, but you've missed a lot in between. So you really should come every year. It's kind of addictive. Once you start going, talking to people who are bird people, and you start telling a cute bird story about somebody in your flock and the people don't just roll their eyes and say, oh, it's just a bird. I mean, <laughs> no, really, they get it. So uh, it, that, that is a great thing to associate with bird people. Oh, that's true. Yeah, no, you're right. You'll be right with your peeps. <laughs> yeah. So this year we're in Costa Mesa, California. And it, the first event begins on Wednesday, just after Labor Day. 
So on Wednesday morning, we have a trip to the LA Zoo and um, it's a carpool thing. So people can go to the zoo and go with other people and, and enjoy the zoo, maybe on a different level than you do when you just go by yourself to a zoo. In the afternoon, we have a business meeting, which we are required by our bylaws to have every year. And that's kind of how the conference was built around that meeting. So you have to have this meeting every year. You might as well offer something to the people who come. So that's our Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday evening, we're going to have a mixer. And we're going to really mix it up with uh, different groups of people and trivia teams. And I think you'll learn some new things about birds. And it should be a lot of fun. Just an opportunity to meet people. So as far as the talks go, the talks go on on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And I have some notes here. <laughs> so we are going to have, we're going to talk about recovering birds for birds that fly away. We'll have some information on the USDA new licensing procedure for uh, bird people. Um, the conservation su uh, successes, we'll talk about condors and blue-throated macaws. Um, a lot of history this year because of it being the 50, 50th year. We'll have a, a bad updates on the avian flu and PBFD. We are also going to have a chicken expert, our Dr. Stephanie Land, sponsored by La oh, Fever. Yeah. I'm really excited to see that. Pet chickens have become such a thing. It'd be good to know more about them. Um, early parrot education. So what do you do with those baby birds, whether you're breeding them or whether you're just getting a baby bird? Uh, training, uh, preventing issues from happening. How to deal with issues when they do happen. These are all different talks. And we'll even have a look at the birds that live free. It'd be a beautiful presentation of birds from Tanzania. We have raffles. We're famous for raffles. <laughs> we have an auction on Saturday night, which is our banquet night. We have a legislative meeting on Thursday. A lot of people are not aware, but um, there are laws that are constantly being passed and proposed that limit our availability to keep birds, just like the original thing uh, 50 years ago where they wanted to outlaw parrots completely in the United States. That's not being proposed right now, but many municipalities, many counties, many states, and some federal legislation interferes with our ability to keep birds. For instance, those of you with Quakers are aware that there are several states where Quakers are completely illegal. There's a couple of states where Indian ringnecks are illegal and Nanday Conyers. Just a random thing. There's yeah. no reason for that. And so we try to make people aware of these things as they come up so we can prevent more of them from passing. Um, and we'll have a meeting about that at the conference on Thursday night so you can learn more about the things, what you can do, what you can watch for, um, what might be coming at you. On Friday night, we have a huge party it's called the Blues Bash, and it is sponsored by the Bird Endowment. It's a fundraiser for and celebration of the blue-throated macaw, and we've had great conservation, great success with the blue-throated macaw. And uh, we we'll talk about that, and then there'll, there'll be this party, which is something you don't want to miss, because it'll be a lot of bird people having a lot of fun talking about macaws. So what's, <laughs> what can be wrong with that, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and there'll be drinks. So um, yeah, in, in some of these cases, there'll also be alcohol. <laughs> so then on Saturday night, we have our awards banquet on um we have a special thing on saturday which i'm going to ask jack to speak about but the one thing that i also wanted to mention is yes we'll have what we'll have vendors 
So we'll have vendors with toys, vendors with cages, vendors with health supplements, jewelry, speaking of jewelry. There's a class on Thursday evening, uh, Dawn, Dawn's Jewelry. She's going to do a class to have people make a piece of jewelry, and they'll have an awesome, very elegant souvenir to take home. Um, sponsors, you know, our sponsors represent the people who are supporting our birds, supporting aviculture, supporting the future of birds in our home, supporting education. Our sponsors are awesome. And so I'll take a minute to first thank LaFever, not only for today, but also for being a sponsor of our conference and making it possible for us to have a conference. Our other sponsors are HARI, um, the Hagen Research Institute, Higgins Premium Pet Foods, um, Vitacraft, American Bird Bands. We have also non, oh, uh, the Centur Centurion Cages and Birdie Bridges. They are also a sponsor. We have two nonprofit sponsors this year. One is the Bird Endowment, and the other one is National Parrot Foundation or Parrot Festival. And without those sponsors, we just simply would not be able to offer what we what we offer to people. And um, so I hope everyone supports them. When you have a choice of buying things from somebody who supports what you do and somebody who doesn't and uh, remember those people. Let me see, that sounded like a speech, but it wasn't, I just had all these notes. <laughs> and I wanted to get through all these notes. So um, Jack is gonna talk about Family Fun Day. This year is the first time that we have offered a free day uh, to the local families kids, parents, everybody who wants to come um, for one session of the talks. They can't go to the other sessions. But um, Jack, you want to talk about Family Fun Day and how much fun you are? <laughs> oh. oh, so my session is the session that everyone's able to go to. There you go. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, everybody the needs one thing to be able to see you. Gotcha. Um, so one thing I think we should talk about, you know, Jamie, you hinted on it a little bit, but I think Family Fun Day really even drives that home that much further. Uh, the American Federation of Aviculture Conference really is an event that is designed for pretty much anyone who is in the of aviculture. So uh, if you are, you know, working on a doctorate and you want to know about the genetics, the genetic breakdown of parrots or uh, different birds. We're going to have speakers that talk about things like that. Um, but also, if you have that single parakeet, which I don't know why that has become the, oh yeah, no, that's the base level bird owner. Because as someone who has been involved with birds for years, parakeets are wonderful. Um, if you have a single parakeet, like cherish that bird, that is an incredible bird. Um, but if you just have that one parakeet, there are going to be sessions that are designed for you as well. Um, and one thing I'm really excited that the American Federation of Aviculture is doing, it's something they have uh, tried to do over the years, is basically push the envelope of how to get more people involved and interested in aviculture. Um, for newer people, for younger people, uh, sometimes bird owners can just seem like the crazy bird people. Um, but there really is... So much that goes into taking care of birds, working with birds. Um, there are so many ways that they contribute to our lives, make our lives better. Speaking as self, my life is immeasurably better because of the presence of birds that I have in it. Um, so getting this opportunity where there's a free event where people can come in, they can see different things. Um, that's going to be a great introduction to aviculture. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that. Um, one of the things that I am planning for this event, it is going to be more of a workshop type event. So it will be more hands-on. There will be more things to do. Um, and the goal of this is to cover the idea of 
enrichment. Um, basically for however many animals you have, however many animals you want to take care of, um, whatever level of effort you are willing to put into it, um, this session should cover all of that. And I just think that's such a cool thing because when I first started working in animal care, enrichment was not seen as something that was needed by birds. Um, we were looking at things like elephants, marine mammals, and primates. Uh, maybe carnivores if you were feeling ambitious or you were mm -hmm. that prestigious an institute, but things like birds were not seen as needing enrichment on a regular basis. Um, and we've now reached the point where we realize all animals benefit from enrichment, that aspect of their care that challenges them mentally, physically, uh, tries to emulate as many opportunities for natural behavior as we might be able to see in the wild. It really is something that just benefits all animals. So with this workshop, hopefully it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be geared for uh, everyone from established bird owners to new bird owners. Uh, and hopefully it'll just get people thinking about how they take care of their animals. Nice. Okay. That you mentioned a good thing too. I mean, if you have a, I mean, a budgie, a parakeet is still an incredible companion that needs all that enrichment too. And I like that, you know, it's the, get, get, get rid of the stigmatism is that is it's only a beginner bird because there's so much potential yeah. those little guys, right? That's right. He's still a parrot. He's just a oh. little one. Yeah, he's a little one. Yeah. So yeah the other thing, I feel like a parakeet. Oh, no, go ahead. My bad. No, you go ahead, Jamie. You go, Jamie. You you go I'll, I'll 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 you go Jamie you go first and then I'll be Jack. I was gonna say we also Jack's workshop is half the day, the other half of the day is um, Chan Quach with his flying macaws, and that will be a lot of fun. So they will he'll show them off and people will be able to see that and interact with these big macaws, and then in the middle of the day we'll have a program for about an hour geared strictly to kids, uh, AFA for kids. And everything, the little, ac the activities they do, everything will be specifically geared to kids. And that's all free. Nice. There's the next generation like of uh, yeah, our, our bird stewards. So we gotta, we gotta, gotta raise them like little chick, little chicks on, the little kid, the next generation. I love that you're, that you guys think about, think of them, you know, like, get everyone enthusiastic about birds is great now jack did you you had a turn <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> sorry oh oh it was just going to be more talking about how wonderful parakeets are but i mean i think we all know that like they're they're really wonderful birds um but yeah one of the things for the american federation of aviculture uh, what sets them apart from maybe some other organizations is that they do focus on all birds. So if you sign up to go to the conference, uh, you know, you're going to maybe hear sessions about emus or penguins, or uh, I believe it was last year there was a session on uh, flamingo breeding. Um, and all of these are birds, just maybe not the birds we have in our house, because, um, you know, we're not lucky because, um, oh, I would love to have a small flock of flamingos just in my living room. Um, how, how we're going to clean that up is another question entirely. Um, but I think it'd be a lot of fun. Um, but the American Federation of Aviculture just addresses so many different birds, um, so many different things that you're working with. So even if you do just have those chickens at home, um, a lot of people did get started with small flocks of chickens chickens following the pandemic. So um, we are seeing a lot of people who got in groups of things like chickens or pheasants um, and now are looking for more ways to take care of them. Um, and again, that's another type of bird that is going to benefit from things like regular enrichment. Um, that's going to be a type of bird that is easily trainable. Um, so if you were wanting to train your chickens to do anything, the AFA conference would be a good resource for knowing how to move forward with the next next steps on that. Nice, nice. And what, uh, just remind us, what, what day is the Family Fun Day at AFA? What, what Saturday. Day are, Saturday. And, and it's Saturday. From, from what time to what time? Nine until probably 4.30, till it's over. 
Four that is a that is a day. That is a family day. <laughs> yes. Is that like pack a lunch? I could, uh, like, like, yes. Better than a trip to the zoo. There we go. Okay. Wow. Oh my gosh. So they're gonna come out of there like bird experts by the time they're gonna know so much about birds. Like if they didn't know or even if they thought they knew birds they're going to know more about birds <laughs> right sometimes you just find out what it is that you how much you don't know i you know i've had birds all my life and i've been working with birds professionally for almost 40 years and i am constantly reminded that every day i still have something new to learn about birds and i'm it, it makes me sad when I run into somebody that's been in around as long as I have who no longer goes to educational things because they feel like they've, they've learned what they need to learn and they're just not interested in any more than that. They just have no idea how deep that bucket goes. There is just so much to know about birds. Yes. Yes. That is very true. They're they're Um, and, and whatever you think, you know, about other pets doesn't apply to birds necessarily. So if you no, imply really. cats or dogs to, you know, like bird, a lot of the behavior is anything like the care results can be so much different. So that's exciting. Um, and then, um, I was going to ask you if you are also, uh, so, so Jack, are you, so you've, so just a little bit more about your background. So you, 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 so, you know, like you said, train, train, trainer and, and tell us a little bit more about, um, about the work you do. Okay. Um, so I work with a wide variety of animals. Um, I actually had just a very humbling moment, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I realized I'm like, how is this even my life? Cause over the course of a day, I went through, um, helping with, the training for a two-toed sloth, uh, writing a training plan for a greater Pacific or a giant Pacific octopus, um, did a hoof trim on a trained hoof trim, voluntary hoof trim on a reticulated giraffe. Um, and just, I, I don't entirely know how I, I got here and it, I, would not change anything for the world because it's absolutely incredible. Um, but I'm just so excited that you know, it, even if you have a bad day, um, the worst day where, you know, you get to hug a giraffe or boop an otter on the nose is still a pretty good day. Um, oh, yeah. But, but yeah, so I am a animal trainer. Um, I've worked with pretty much everything there is to work from, everything from budgies all the way up to Asian elephants. Um, I've worked with reptiles, marine animals, birds, uh, mammals. Uh, so I've worked with a wide variety of things. Um, I've also done what I can to try to make as much of what I have learned accessible to other people. Um, so especially during the pandemic, I started by putting together instructional videos and things like that that would be available for people online just so they could learn the basics of training different animals, building different toys for their animals. Um, and I believe it was either two or three years ago, um, I think it was two years ago at the AFA conference, um, I did a session there, someone came up to me and they said, you know, we watched one of your videos, we thought it was great, we had a volunteer come through, um, you did a tutorial on how to build a little stand for training parrots. Um, and it can also be used for getting weights by using it on a scale. Um, well, we run a rescue. We've actually decided one of our volunteers is going to make one of those for every parrot we're able to adopt out. We'll talk to the owners about working on the training, working on the scale training so that they can get regular weights to make sure that their birds are healthy. Um, and just the realization that it's like, even the things that I do, even if they seem little, can have a very real impact on birds completely across the country or even around the world. It's just um, amazing and incredibly humbling. And I'm just really happy to be a part of it. Oh, that's great. Like, I think the training, like if you, I mean, even just having like you, you, teaching your bird, like, like, to like raise their foot like it's just like you connect on a on this really fun level and just makes the interactions just like it, it just and you want to like build on that and it's just uh 
just having those little things are so exciting, so exciting to, to see in birds. Even uh, my birds, of course, they, they seem to, the, they do their own thing mostly, but but we always try. Even even the fun is even in the trying. It's, so yeah. so takeaways will be great to learn too. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Okay, okay. This is, a, I, I'm I'm really, I, I feel like I, I, I'm gonna go find some kids to bring with me to the family day that <laughs> since i'm close by <laughs> i'm like come on kids <laughs> so, oh my goodness and, and then uh, so so jamie so you were talking earlier about um one of the things that afa does is uh, it was it is it education about uh, so so i'm i'm a big fan of quaker parrots right i love quaker parrots but i can't have I, they don't you don't get them in california they're banned here the ban 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 no quaker parrots in california so does afa work on educating people to let them know not not to like don't have a Quaker parrot if you're if you don't if you're in a state that you can't have them or is it trying to get them so they'll be able to have them here like to work with the the is it fishing game that that says no 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 to some well, of these parrot species it's actually the various states that have those laws it's not uh, and it's not a national law thank goodness um the Quaker Parakeet Society, AFA is also a federation of many different organizations. And the Quaker Parakeet Society, which is an awesome society, and if you love Quaker Parakeets, they are a good group to belong to. They <clears throat> they do a, they try to educate people about um, why it's why Quakers are really okay. They have coordinated these rescues where. Quakers were found once on a telephone pole in Connecticut. And when I say found on a telephone pole, that doesn't sound like a big deal if you don't know about Quakers, but they build these giant nests. And these nests can weigh a, as much as a ton, and it can interfere with electrical service and phone service, and people get very cranky about that, and that's probably one of the main reasons that they uh, some states outlaw them. So the Quaker Parakeet Society has worked on removing those nests and on trying to provide an alternative nest for the birds so they don't do that. <clears throat> they had a situation in Pennsylvania where a woman took her Quaker to the vet and they're illegal in Pennsylvania and she had moved there from another state. And her vet turned her in. And so the local fish and wildlife showed up at her door and they were going to take her bird. And um, they, she worked with us, we worked with her. And um, they allowed the bird uh, two weeks, I believe it was, to get it out of the state. So somebody else in AFA fostered the bird in Virginia. Um, <clears throat> And the woman actually moved down to Pennsylvania so she could get her bird back. Wow. That's how much she loved her Quaker. Oh. oh but wow. that's not the only story like that. But so AFA, because it's a group of bird people, we can work together to do things. And the, and the Quaker Parakeet Society, if you are interested in Quakers, they're considered, they've been put at, on the list as invasive in several states. Hmm. They're really not, but it's difficult to prove that they're not. Okay. So uh, these things are much harder than they look. And you so mentioned had, Sorry. there's also there's some birds that are um, I'll to AFA's horn again. Uh, birds that are listed under the Endangered Species Act. So in order to and I don't understand the logic. Nobody does. So you can't buy and sell these birds across state lines. You can give them away, but you can't buy or sell them across state lines. And the object is to preserve them in the wild. Now, we no longer import birds from the wild and haven't for many years. And so it doesn't really serve to, to stop. It doesn't help them in the wild, but what it does do is create a bottleneck in captivity so that if you have a pair of these birds and then you sell the, the offspring to people, 
and everybody is sold within a small area, now, now you have no genetic diversity there. So several years ago, one of our um, late members, uh, Dr. Janice Boyd, did some research and wrote a uh, paper about the golden conure and how they are not as endangered in the wild as they once were. And we petitioned, AFA petitioned Fish and Wildlife to, to remove them from the Endangered Species Act. Fish and Wildlife drug their feet. They're supposed to give you a, a determination within two years. So three years later, they were still dragging their feet, not, not following their own timetable. And so um, there, there is a law firm that sues the government over situations like this. And so they sued on behalf of AFA and Fish and Wildlife removed the uh, golden conures from the Endangered Species Act. Well, they made them so that they would be reviewed every five years. But in the meantime, you can sell an, a golden conure out of your state. And that was a huge thing, but it took an organization to be willing to stand behind it so that um, so that, that could be done. Interesting. And that's one of the accomplishments of AFA. And you mentioned also Nande Conyers. In, um, yes. We, we actually have uh, naturalized flocks at Nande Conyers in the LA area. Uh, yeah. You can hear them coming. What, what's the reason? Is it because they don't build the, the nests that... Um, no. I have no idea. I think it's Tennessee and um, there's another one. I, I know Tennessee has a law against Nande Conyers and, um, and and that's a little crazy. And I know that because I had a customer in Tennessee that wanted to buy Nande Conyers and discovered they couldn't. <laughs> but most of those birds are, um, they consider them invasive. I don't know if the noise just gets on somebody's nerves or yeah, it can be loud, but no one there to argue about it, nobody there to fight it. And they just write that out and say, Hey, I think these should be considered invasive. And this is why I think so. And you know, it's a pretty good point. Nobody says they shouldn't be, it's not a problem. And so that passes. So AFA tries to be that voice and help its members fight it against that kind of watch for that kind of thing and um protest it yeah or at least ask the question like why would yeah like the why is like what's yeah. the... <laughs> the why is because somebody there was a situation in the northeast and somebody will know more about it than i do i don't remember but it, it had to do with a senator or congressman whose granddaughter lost a parakeet and she was devastated and because of that it grew into this this thing about banning birds in that area. And all because a little girl lost her parakeet. And that's very sad, but not a reason for nobody else to be able to have them. Wow. Yeah. So. That is it. it, it and so um, wow. uh, just to, so the conference that we're, the, it's going to start, um, is it, uh, wait, someone asked a question, uh, if the complete schedule, um, it, where can we find the complete schedule for the conference? The complete uh, schedule will be online. Um, we've just I've gotten the speaker schedule ready. Um, and so all of that will be online probably within the next 24 hours. And I have a QR code for the website and of course, it's afabirds.org, but you can scan this QR code if I do this right. We practiced this earlier. It worked on my phone. Oh, that's so the back know. of my phone. I could see it really well. <laughs> laugh at me. Now I've lost the whole QR code. Well, while you're while you're getting that, I'll just remind everybody because I it's, I always forget. So yeah, you open your camera function and then you aim it, and it should when you see that little square yellow, and it it'll it did it on my phone, so I know I know it'll work. We did yeah, I know it'll work. It, except yeah. I can't hold up the back of my phone. I have to. Hold oh yeah, up don't the do the back. Whatever you did before, do that again. That worked perfect. <laughs> and then just yeah. Yeah, 
I have to figure out where I saved it now. I think that's it. No, that's not it. You know, and I'm I'm so embarrassed because I made it a point. I made it a point to get this home ready. Or we gotta put it in the chat. It's also this would not happen. But you know. We'll find a we'll find a way, one way or another. Like a link we'll to the find a way. I have it. <laughs> you guys talk. Um let's see if I can put it in the chat maybe too. It is well. And I'm working with um not my phone. Oh wow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm working with a different phone. And you know, phones are weird. They're just not all the same, regardless of how much they should be the same. Let's see. Um, um, oh, if, if anybody is watching on the Facebook, the Lefebvre Nutriberries group, uh, where the post is for today's uh, webinar, um, there is a comment there that has the afabirds.org, um, which you guys would be able to click on to then get to all of the information about both the organization or the conference. Thank you, Jack. <laughs> that works. <laughs> because apparently I'm not going to be able to find it. So. But it oh, is afabirds.org. <laughs> I'm going to look for it. And also, um, there was a follow-up question. They wanted, uh, are there, is there going to be anything on uh, eclectus parrots? I'm sure there'll be some takeaways for every parrot in general, but anything specific to eclectus? Yes, there's not a specific talk on eclectus. So, in fact, I, I don't know that we have any species-specific talks. Some some years we do, but this year I don't see any that are species-specific, except the blue throat macaw, which talks mostly about the conservation. Okay, I'm going to see if I can. Oh, sorry. Um, and of course, chickens. And chickens. <laughs> that's, let's see if that um, helps. There's some ant hairs over there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Um, um, oh, wait, someone had a great question. Larry wants to know uh, learn about volunteer opportunities with AFA. Uh, yeah. They, yeah, prior experience at vet tech and a zookeeper. So, well, that's awesome. But you know, AFA doesn't actually touch birds we don't own birds we don't keep birds our members have birds and the organizations that we work with have birds but um that doesn't mean we don't need volunteers it is a volunteer organization and if you will write the afa office at afa office at afabirds.org and say that you would like to volunteer um we will look and see if there's something that we can ask you to do. And coming to the conference helps too. Great. Um, and then uh, do you have to register for the family fun day um, for the free, for free tickets? Do you have we, to ask, we ask people to RSVP. And there is a place on the website, registration site to RSVP. The spaces will be limited. I, I don't, we have a, quite a bit of room so I don't know that we would ever have to turn somebody away but um but we do ask that they are SVP okay yeah so you want to get an idea of how many materials to bring I'm sure right, right. Gotcha. how many chairs to put out all right um oh yeah so we got yeah if you look in the the chat you'll see links to the um to the conference some of the uh some information there that those that I think that's what the QR code was, was going to take us that's so what it is yeah you're covered there all right um yeah the so wait when was where was when and where was the last uh AFA conference just it was in Dallas and it was last September is it always and in September sorry just for playing ahead it was the last week in September last year okay so um we combined with um Agriculture Society of America and the Organization of Professional Aviculturists, and all three organizations went together to have a conference last year. So, uh, but this year we we wanted to focus on our 50th anniversary, so, because that's a big deal for us. 50th, yeah, what do you bring to 50th anniversary? I can't remember. Yeah, that's, 
It's amazing. You know, it's kind of funny you say that because uh, the Bieber has 50th anniversary of their, um, uh, oh God, it, it, that uh, of our, the, the, the 50th anniversary of Nutriberry. So there this you go. Year? Yeah. Well, the, in 2023, was it? Yeah. Okay. Wait. Well, so recent right. 50th celebration as well. So we're kind of yeah. in line with AFA. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, it, and is it is it usually every fall? The the, the kind it of fall. It is in the fall. So. It has been. Um, we have ranged between the first of August and the end of September. And it's possible that it might go early October, but okay. um, that that time frame. All right, just so people if they kind of keep an an, an eye out for the yes. fall. Yes, yeah. and we we try to get the information out. We're not. We also have, um, if you watch our webpage, we, our Facebook page, you can find us on Facebook. We have uh, every year eight raffle prizes that are big and the uh, the tickets are $5 each. We do the drawing at the banquet on Saturday night, but we sell the tickets everywhere year round and um, you can buy them online. And there's some pretty good prizes. There's a $500 Visa gift card. There's a 64 by 32 double macaw cage. There's a Brincy Bruder. There's a full registration to the following year, including the hotel. Um, there's a quilt, a very nice handmade quilt. Absolutely gorgeous. I love quilts. I always spend a lot of money on the quilt raffles. Um, I write this down. I have written. I have this written down. I should have it in my memory, memory banks. Uh, clean. Oh, there's some cleaning stuff like a Sonic. Um, it's called a Sonic. It's like a Roomba thing. It mops and sweeps. That'd be great and, for a bird room. <laughs> I know, and also a steam, handheld steamer, and um, and a scrubber. Uh, we have a Simply Safe system for you know security, and we have an Austin Air for the air quality. And any one of those things, so the tickets are five dollars each. Those are all really good prizes. Very nice. And available and if, on the website. And if you win that macaw cage, do you have to just put it in your trunk? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, um, it does break down. A you put it in a pickup truck. And you could be a size cage. Yeah. Oh, just to go back, it is the 50th anniversary of Lefebvre. So Lefebvre and FA were like, like it's just they're this, yeah, they're shared yeah. shares. In, in it was a big year for birds, apparently. That was when it yeah, that was when kind of the things really better. took up. Yeah. Like the yeah, yeah, for the better, yeah, better interest of birds. Right there. That that important an important timeline in the history of, of yes. Companion pets, companion pet friends. Okay, so um, oh yeah, so um, uh, just real quick, uh, Frank wanted to point out that New Jersey bans Quakers in Indian ringnecks. Uh, is there any chance to overturn that idiotic law? Like you can't, uh, they ban both Indian ringnecks and Quakers. Um, so any, you know, I I think they should all be overturned, but um, I don't I don't think there's any. There's nothing in the pike right now that says this might happen. So people just need to work on it. Yeah, New Jersey has a pretty strict banding law. So does uh, Colorado. But um, yeah, ringnecks are illegal in New Jersey and maybe Tennessee. Are they okay? I know bandays are illegal in Tennessee, and I, I don't remember all the states where Quakers are illegal, but there are several. It's just interesting because it, like a neighboring state that you there you could have them, but the one next door you can't. So you, you wonder if they, you live right on the border there. <laughs> like, right. There there have been a lot of uh, I'm told, I don't know this for a fact, but I've been told that there's a lot of gray breasted parakeets in Colorado. <laughs> and that's what they call them is gray breasted parakeets. Because Quakers are illegal. Oh, that's <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, back in the day, years. Uh, I'm it was sure actually, that doesn't fool everybody. 
Yeah, no, that's, that's, you're right. Um, I just remembered that, that when they had a, uh, so I was at the Orange County Airport, which is really close to where, you know, the conference is going to be. Um, I was heading out, I probably to Parrot Fest, probably going, you know, on a bird, I, I was going on a bird trip for bird talk, and I can't remember where I was going, but this little girl opened up her pet carrier, and she had a Quaker parrot, and she was pet, she, you know, her and her mom were, were petting the, the, the Quaker parrot in, like, the, you know, waiting for us to board our flight, and I was like, ooh, I'm like, what kind of, do you know what kind of bird you have there, and they're like, oh, it's a parakeet, and I was like, well, it's a Quaker parakeet, and I was like, I would be and, showing that off. <laughs> they had no idea that they weren't supposed to have them in California. They made it. They made it to California, and then I was. And I said, "Yeah, I guess you know if they ask you, just it's parakeet." <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah, they had no no idea. But it was just surprising because I, I mean, I, just right in the smack middle of the airport is the beautiful Quaker parakeet. It was, it was adorable. It was a little yeah, young one. So, and a note about the Quaker Parakeet Society. They were one of our nonprofit sponsors last year, but this year they're not because there are no Quakers in California. So they're usually a part of our conference and they usually have a big booth and, and, um, and they're great, but they're not going to have a big representation this year because Quakers are illegal in California. That's right. Along with ferrets. Um... <laughs> yes, I know. There's a big Ferrets Anonymous group. And I always thought that the Quaker Parrot Society and the Ferrets Anonymous group were kind of, they kind of have, have similar battles and, and they're both very <laughs> vocal and very, um, you know, they they really care about like that group of, of animals and they're great organizations. So, right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, and, the, you know, like, oh, I'm just speaking. So it, when you do, when you do come to AFA in Costa Mesa, there are a lot of, um, everyone's visiting there are a lot of it's really neat there are a lot of naturalized parrots there's there's the amazons and you've got the the conyers that they're all in that area too you'll see you'll see them flying around yes and our second off-site tour which i didn't mention at way to wind down at the end of the conference on sunday afternoon we're going to go to a place called the wild parrot brewery and uh, it's a little craft beer place and they're about a block from uh, from one of the big nests where the uh, Amazons roost at night. And so we can walk that block and watch all the birds come home to roost in the evening, which, you know, for people who live in South Texas may not be cool, but for people who live in the rest of the world, yeah, or Florida, Florida has a lot of wild parrots. But, um, but for the rest of us, seeing them in the wild is kind of a cool thing. Wow, I never, I never, that, that's a great name for a, for a, for a pub. That's awesome. Okay. That's great. What city is that? Is that located in? Is it, um, <laughs> <what's>, <laughs> somewhere? Is it, well, when you say what, then what is it like? Lie to you. It's called the Wild Parrot Brewery. Okay. I, I, I already want a t shirt from there. I don't know what it looks like, but I it sounds like I have a really cool t shirt there. I want to say it's Anaheim, but I could be lying about that. Okay. I don't believe I'll have to do another Googling, but that sounds amazing. Um, all right. That's, yeah, that's, and that's another. Oh, um, okay. Sorry. I, I'm just so excited about this. Is going to come up so fast, but not, but not fast enough that you don't have time to book, to book a flight yeah. Yeah, or, a, or, a, or a car <laughs> trip, a road trip to, to Costa Mesa, California. So, yeah. Uh, there's still some deals out there for travel if you have to travel by airplane, but there, and road trip and, you know, is always fun to do too. So. Yeah. And the hotel, uh, you can do the hotel through August 16th. Uh, that reservation's open. There's a link on our website for that. There you go. All right. So you got like a full two weeks to, to, to book a place too. So. Sure. All right. That's great. And that's a, uh, what, 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 I'm sorry, which, uh, hotel is hosting, um, it's the Hilton Orange County in Costa Mesa. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, and so this all starts. This all goes down. When, when, when should people arrive if they're booking their travel? Should they uh, September? It's September fourth is the first official. Uh, right, I, I'll be there on Sunday, the day before Labor Day, and some of us will come in then. Our first board meeting is on Tuesday morning, and for me, it kind of begins at that point. And uh, but for for the general public, it begins on Wednesday morning. Okay, 
Wednesday morning. And then, um, and I want to remind everybody that um, Dr. Lamb, everyone knows if you've been doing any, join any of our webinars, Dr. Lamb is going to be at AFA um, presenting on Saturday. And so I'm excited because I get to meet her in person. I've only known her virtually. Yeah. I'm so, excited about that too. Yeah. So Dr. Lamb and, um, and yeah, Dr. Lamb will be there. So that's another reason to come on by if you ever wanted to, to meet Dr. Lamb, see Dr. Lamb in person, because we've seen her so many, uh, she's been on us with uh, so many fabulous uh, webinars. Uh, she, she was the one that was our first webinar was with Dr. Lamb many years ago. Um, I could say many years ago, because it doesn't seem that long ago, but we actually, like, that's a few years ago now that we started these webinars. Um, okay, and uh, Brenda, just reminding everybody that it's the Orange County um, SNA Airport. It's super close to the to, to where the event's taking place. It's and like, there's a free shuttle from the airport. Free shuttle from the airport, so you don't have to worry about getting there from the airport. There you go. Um, okay, I got to announce today's giveaway winner because we are going to give away some. Um, I'm uh, I'm going to. I think we're doing the. Are we doing the strawberry nutriberries, uh, which is the newest um, uh, offering from Lefebvre? And if you haven't had a chance to try the strawberry nutriberries, when you um, when you open the bag, it just smells so good. It smells like fresh strawberries. And my little budgie friend, my little parrot, loves them. Like he just. I open the, like when I pick up the bag, he just gets all excited. So um, <laughs> you got to try it. So that that's going to go, it's a, a, a bag of strawberry nutri berries. That's going to Elaine, uh, Elaine Venditti, and also another Lefebvre product of your bird's choosing. So congratulations, Elaine. And um, let's see, I'm just going to do a really quick sneak peek at our next comp, uh, next webinar, which will be, when is that going to be? That's going to be August 9th, next Friday. We're already in August. Uh, so we're going to have um, Dr. Lamb, um, she's going to, uh, what is she's going to, uh, what is she going to talk about? Sorry. She always has such a great, oh, uh, Peru. We're going to talk about, um, species, uh, from Peru. So parrot species from Peru. I'm sure there's a lot because there's a lot of parrots in Peru. And so join us, join us then. And, um, I cannot wait to meet both you, Jack and you, Jamie, in person at AFA, uh, coming up, uh, September first weekend in September or beginning of September. So everyone uh, mark your calendars. Hope you can join us. And I, I really hope to, that some of our joinees today, if you can at all, uh, come on down. Come on down to Costa Mesa, CFA. There you go. Learn about some, meet some fabulous fellow bird people. Thank you very much for having us. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us. Everyone have a great weekend. Uh, mark your calendars for September and uh, have a wonderful weekend. All the best in your flock. Until next time, stay safe. Bye.